for joining us today on our Jesus My King podcast. We are so excited that you have clicked on to listen, and we pray that you will be blessed and enlightened and inspired by all of what you hear. We have so much for everyone on here. We've got God Talk, where we discuss things we all have in common and go through on our walk with Jesus, to testimonials from real people, allowing themselves to be vulnerable and share the amazing stories about what God has done in their lives, to His Kingdom Vineyard, which leads our listeners to a deeper teaching of God's Word. So again, thank you for joining. And if you like what you hear, please subscribe to our podcast and please share with all your friends and family. Thank you, guys. Welcome. This is Misty and Jerry with our God Talk Thursday, and we are happy that you're listening. And um, I think we're really excited about the topic this week. Um, Again, just like um, every week, he's brought us through some things that um, definitely have to do with what we're going through. And so surrendering... Surrendering is our topic. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, this week, yes. No, it's a good topic. It's such a good thing if, you know, if we would only realize what the benefits are. Oh, yes. Because I do think that we don't surrender things because we think we are the best ones at controlling this. (laughs) And we have the, uh, you know, God is bringing to my mind that um, we have to surrender people to him. And if you... If someone bugs you, if someone has hurt you, which is the hardest, uh, or if you can't forgive someone or just a disagreement or whatever it might be that you think about all the time in this other person That's and you want to fix is... some other person yeah. or you want to get that other person to come over to your side and see it the way you see it, it's you just... We need to surrender people, and this is what I've been working on this week. I'm the oldest in a somewhat raised in a dysfunctional family, aren't we all? But, Mm -hmm. you know, of course, we all think ours was, you know, very unique. (laughs) But really, it's pretty typical that you, you get trust issues and... Things like that. And you also think you can fix people. That was Mm -hmm. something I learned my whole life is, come on, if we love them enough or if we do this or we do that, then um, they're going to be fixed. And I'm the one who's going to do it. You know, and I've lived half my life that way. Oh, let's be real. All my life. (laughs) All my life that way. It's only been recently through... Misty and Sean and different people like that's why it's so important to be around other Christians is we all kind of learn it together that surrendering gives you well it takes that big weight off well, your shoulders once you fully surrender then that's when you're really going to get complete peace that's the key peace in your life and if something is consuming your thoughts and it's not anything that's giving you peace then that is not from God. <laughs> or, or if you're just work, 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 trying to fix something. Yeah. Or you're doing, and of course, you never have peace when you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very hard to do. It's yeah, so that's the question people. is, how do you fully surrender? And and that really, I mean, you know, we are talking about how do you get that, relay that, you know, and that is just getting to the point where you're fully trusting. That's the key. You have to fully trust that God wants good for you. And I was telling Jerry, one of the things when I, when I find myself doubting Jeremiah 29, 11 is one of my favorite verses. And it says, I know the plans I have for you, the plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future. So we have to understand God's love for us. Right. We were talking about, you have to know his character. And his character is all love. Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't think like we do. He is God Almighty. I mean, think about the universe and all the galaxies. And I mean, he's huge. Mm-hmm. And we're just these. And he loves us so much. And if you get that in your head, uh, we don't even in our brains have the capacity to understand mm-hmm. that kind of love. We can think, oh, yes, it's bigger than my kind of love. But it's hard to understand how much he really loves us. And then if we would get that in our heads and realize that, then you can trust because a lot of people don't trust because of things that have happened to them yeah. in their lives. And they, they hold on to things that are sometimes a protection thing 
or just trying to keep from getting hurt again or mad again or whatever it is, or needing to be right is a big one. Mm -hmm. And we can, our mind deceives ourselves, and that's part of it is surrendering your mind. Um, And it is a choice. Like, you may have to say it for a few days. Like, this week I've had to say it every day (laughs) and over and over and read scripture because... Um, it's hard to surrender something that you've held on to for that long, a long time. So, um, a testimony, I'll go ahead and go here, but a testimony that I can say and how, cause some of those things that we hold on to, you know, sometimes it takes us getting, you know, to where God brings us on our knees to where we say, okay, I trust you. You're all I have. I need you. And, um, God brought me to that point in my life because I wasn't trusting in him and I was trying to do life my own way. And one of the things that I needed to surrender was a feeling of being needed and wanted. And I didn't realize that that's what was going on, but I got myself into a destructive relationship because that person filled that need for me to be needed. I thought I was helping somebody and um it ended up because I was not surrendering that because I wasn't looking to God to fill those needs I was looking at man to fill those needs well first of all man is going to disappoint right. for the most part so we need to and always look can, at God can also turn into idolatry yes when you are yeah so focused on another person and like your happiness has to come from whatever you're trying to get out of them yeah you don't have happiness unless they change or whatever which that's you know you can't change you can't change it so when that relationship got really bad there was a point in my life where i was i did not know what to do anymore but i desperately needed help and i got on my hands and knees and i cried out to god i need you i'm so sorry i turned my back on you i love you i need you and And, um, I was wrong, you know, just, just repenting. Um, and you know, I had the Bible in front of me and I would open up the Bible and he would just give me these verses of love and how much he loves me. And I did this on my lunch breaks. Um, when I was working, I'd come home and, and I, that first time I did it, I, you know, I got on my hands and knees and I was praying and I was just overwhelmed by the verses that he was giving me. I mean, literally I would just look at the Bible, Lord God, just talk to me, speak to me somehow. And I would open it up and this verse would be highlighted Mm -hmm. and I'm like, Oh my gosh, no way. And I would close the Bible again and I would pray like, Lord God, this is crazy. And I would open it again and another verse would be highlighted just about his love. And so it got to the point where I couldn't wait to go home for lunch my lunch break so I could spend that time with God because he continued to do that. He was trying to draw me back to him. Well, and, and I prayed also to, to give me, you know, some help with this trust thing. Mm -hmm. And he knows our hearts. He knows what we've been through. He's been watching the whole time and he knows that's hard for some people to let go of things or trust him. But just like you were saying, once you get in your mind how much he loves, loves you, you, and he's done the same thing for me. Give me little signs and things. It might be through a song. It might be, you know, through people. It, it's through a verse. But he's, if you're paying attention, he's going to speak to you. With and, people around And we you. can trust him. It's just that the problem is if you're controlling it all, especially, you're like, well, no, I need it to be this way. And I, I'm not going to be happy unless it turns out this well, way. Well, and apparently and I he's was... he's got a better way. He does. So he one has time... He totally has a better way. Uh, maybe he knew it was going to take a lot <laughs> for me to get there because um, when I was working one day, a friend of mine and I were standing um, upstairs at, at Nebraska Furniture Mart, and it was not a busy day. And um, randomly, this lady comes up and says are you ready to hear from Jesus today? And both my friend and I looked at each other like, this weirdo? What, <laughs> what is it? Okay, sure. <laughs> and uh, and she spoke into my friend's life. And she, But before that, she said, well, I woke up today and Jesus told me I needed to come here. And when I came here, he said I needed to go upstairs. And I seen you too. And I knew exactly why I was here. And um, so she speaks into my friend's life. She was kind of going through a decision-making process in her life, and she looks straight in at me, and she says, And you, n- your beautiful face does not deserve what you've been getting, and you need to get the devil out of the house. 
And I just lost it. <laughs> because you truly did need to get the devil out I of needed to get, I was in an abusive relationship, something I never thought I would have, have entered into. And I was struggling to find my way out of it. Um, and, and she said, and I don't want to hear from you until you get him out. <laughs> but she's like, she just spoke right at me, got my heart. I don't know this person from Adam. But, but then that again, was God. that helps you to trust. So that was one further step that, oh my gosh, you know, there are millions of people that work walk on this earth and God noticed me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so that was building that trust. And so literally, I think it was right after that, that I really just was like, okay, God, help me, get me through this, mm-hmm. you know, and starting to surrender. And he will, especially if you pray for it. You pray for peace. You pray for, you're even praying for this person to change so you can have this great life or whatever. (laughs) You're praying for all these things. And so you're praying to him and he's going, okay, I'm going to make your life a lot better. But he never promises you that it's going to be just super, super easy because lessons never are. Lessons are never easy. And you go through the valleys, and it's, like, painful. It's like someone ripping Band-Aids off you. You know what, though? But I kind of, like, I don't enjoy going through that. But at the same time, I know that God, like, I just went through it last week. Not as much as you did, but I went through a surrendering where where something was on my mind constantly. And I Mm -hmm. recognized that it was consuming me. And I wasn't allowing God to flow through because the way that I move, I, I, I move a lot and I, 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 how do you explain that? I act. I feel like God's talking to me and I, I'm in action. I, I keep on going, but this thought was consuming me so much that I realized I am holding that as an idol. I need to let it go so that God can work through me. I got to fully surrender. I thought I surrendered it, but not when it's consuming my thoughts. So I, Getting on my hands and knees again, God, I'm sorry, you know, and doing and see, that. It just it totally goes back to what we talked about last week, which was getting the stumbling blocks out of the way. Yeah, and not surrendering something is a total stumbling block. He he wants to move a lot quicker than we let him do it. I mm-hmm. mean, if we just surrender stuff and something offends us, we go, oh, take it. If we get you know, something we he puts in our mind that, oh, you're holding on to this, you're idolizing this. If we realize it and go, oh, get rid of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, after a while, it, it just works a lot faster mm-hmm. and it works a lot smoother. And he wants just all those things you beg him for, all those things in your heart that you want. We are our own worst enemy because we hold on to things that God says, I told you to put that on me. And again, it goes back to Jeremiah 29. I know the plans I have for you to prosper you and to give you a future and hope. And knowing that God wants that good for us, that has to, you know, that's, that's part of that surrender. You know, you bet. Well, okay. And this is first Peter. No, this is John 15, 1 through 7. And sorry about that. But it says, I, Jesus, okay, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Again, he's cutting off things that are bad for us. He wants good for us. Mm -hmm. And... You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And to me, that just means all these things that we're holding on to or strongholds Mm -hmm. or stumbling blocks. That are keeping us from him working through us. Right. It does, and he just wants us to remain in him, and he's got it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's huge, he's big, he's powerful, he's all everything. And we, and we little people don't trust him. So you've gone through a hard week. Mine was just recognizing and, you know, pushing forward, but sometimes it gets you at this horrible, painful route, and... I don't know. I feel like this week you've had, without going too much into detail, you've had a pretty transforming life. I mean, 
Well, because all those things I was just talking about. I mean, <laughs> because but there, it was you painful. hold on, you hold on to things, and when I and probably the most truth about my own experience is that you, you're trying to get an outcome, and you also are trying to protect your heart from getting hurt. You're also trying to protect your mouth from saying the wrong thing. I mean, there's all these things, and man, does it wear you out? It wears you out actually to hold on to all that, and. It was making me tired, even just mm -hmm. holding on to all that. And like you said, incredibly about getting, sad. And, and you but know, you go, I, why am I holding on to this? And Sean actually said to me, um, you know, people. We were talking about letting go of people, and it doesn't mean you don't love them or anything. But Sean said to me, they're not yours anyway. They're mm -hmm. not yours. We don't own people. Our happiness cannot come from other people. And also, every, we're gods. I mean, whoever you're holding on to, they belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he loves them as much as he loves you. So who are you to think you can fix everything? Mm -hmm. We're not God. And you have to give it up to him because he has your best interest, the other person's best interest. He's God. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. And so you and just have to get that in your head. I don't know why, and again, I'm going to bring up that Star is Born. When I watched that documentary, and it's on our Jesus My King Facebook page, but it really hit me how much he's in the details of everything. And it talks about just the stars and the constellations and where they were, mm -hmm. the, you know, the star over, you know, Bethlehem. And, and it's so amazing. And if he is in the details of all that, why can he not handle <laughs> this situation no, that we are stressed about? It's just us. He can handle everything. <laughs> it's almost it's funny. It's because we don't think he can, but, you know, learning to put that in him. Well, and also you got to give him the glory because he will take it if you're willing to, to give, give it up. To give it, yeah. He's waiting for you to give it up. He's mm -hmm. waiting for you to be willing to say, all right, okay, 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 I get it. Take it from mm -hmm. me. And as soon as you do that, you just watch what starts to happen. Mm -hmm. He starts fixing things because yep. he's God. Guess what? Because he's God. <laughs> and he will just start fixing it. And you will be sorry that you held on to it for, for so, so long. Because he can't yes. act until we give it over. And right. so that's you have the to be willing. fun. Isn't that the fun part? Like, Well, I'm getting it quicker and quicker every time. Yeah. It feels like I'm on a roller coaster ride. But it's a good one. I like <laughs> roller coasters, but... Um, it, it's still, you're, you're learning and learning and learning, but, um, if we just real, I'm doing it much quicker now because yeah. I realize how much it hurts me and my walk with God when I don't give it up. And before I don't think I realized that. Yeah. I mean, it makes me sad. I spent so many years, you know, thinking I could fix things if I had just given it up. I mean, he wants to, like that says, he wants you to bear fruit. He wants all good for you. And it doesn't mean that you're giving up on somebody. Say, no. you know, you've got a sibling that hurts you or a mom that hurts you. And, you know, it's not saying that I'm just going to put my walls up. I'm not going to let them No, But what you are doing is you are taking it to the father. You are praying to him, God, this is too much for me. I can't, I can't bear this. I can't take on the stresses. I can't take on the anxiety. I can't take on this pain. This is not what God wants and you to handle. He wants worry. you to give it to him. The worry, A lot of yeah. people, you know, you're not really changing anything. You're worrying a lot yeah. all the time. And I struggled with that for most of my life. Mm -hmm. Worrying, and it changes nothing. What, um... My mom, this, and my mom just had an aneurysm. God bless her, and she's just a miracle. She's doing really, really well within a matter of a month. But um, part of why we didn't get along for the longest time was because we would, um, she would worry and she would try to control, and then I would get stressed out when she was around, and then it was just like a big boom, you know. And, and she's uh, trying to make you a certain way, and you're wanting her to be a certain yeah, way. Yeah, I, I mean, mean we just, just like we just collided constantly. And I was sitting down with her the other day. She is so laid back and just, I mean, God has been working in her life. I told her, I said, Mom, it's either the aneurysm or God is working in your life because she's just like a, you know, if you can't control it, why worry about it? And I'm looking at her like, what? Where, where did this come where from? Where did you come from? <laughs> but, um, you know, you can just see that peace in her 
that, uh, you know, just by giving it up to God, if you can't control it, you got to release it. And, um, and she's doing that, at least practicing that in her life. And it's just so cool to see that piece just, I mean, you could feel it from her. It's, well, and it's I, awesome. I want that piece more than anything. And I think most of us do. Yeah. But we don't realize what's causing us not to have peace. And I do realize now after not just this past week, but I mean, I'm now in my head going, oh, my gosh, I've been doing this for forever. And just I want that peace. If uh, if totally giving something up gives you that, I mean, you just have to decide you're going to do it. And like we said, if you're willing, he will take it. But you can't, and, and if you take it back the next day, just realize it and say, okay, I took that back for a couple hours. <laughs> I'm going to give it back to you. <laughs> now I'm giving it back to you because I have had to do it every day. I was reading an it's article where it said that sometimes we, we take our blessings and we don't, they become idols. You know, uh, we were reading an article about a, a mom that was going through empty nest and she did not have peace and her kids were her blessing. But because they were out of the house, there, you know, there was worry. There was all kinds of stuff. A lot of, of worry and wanting to control and stuff. And she was yeah. having a really hard time, you know, letting go, like just letting God, you know, take that grip away from trying to control or, you know, know what's going on with her kids or whatever. And it again, if it's not peace, then it's not from God. So finally she had to say, God, they're yours. And, mm-hmm. you know, peace came with that too. So. Yes. Yes. We're so, we sound so wise. We've struggled all week. <laughs> we we just we want to share with you how yeah you know, we've learned kind of through these struggles through our tears we get to <laughs> well and also it doesn't mean oh I got that down pat now no. it just means this is something God has shown us to be a real yeah thing that not just Misty and I go through this is what everybody, everybody goes, goes through. through so that's why we were talking about it but it's not always people like um <coughs> oh no there's so many things like you know uh mind your mind what is it your mind heart your your mind body soul spirit spirit yeah, yeah all that um you know, there's all different kinds of things like, um, you know, uh, what we watch on TV, you know, we see sex on TV constantly. We're bombarded. And it's funny because I don't really realize just how bad it is until I've not watched TV forever. And then I go back and watch something on normal TV and, and it's like, wow, I can't believe this is there, but our minds have been programmed so much to see these things that sometimes we have to really watch our thoughts and what are we putting our thoughts on? What are we, you know, I would say like coveting, you know, or what is it something that we strongly want, you know, and desire. Well, even people with addictions, you know, All which is it. a whole different thing. But again, and it's not like I've never struggled with anything like that. You have to be willing yeah, and, and sometimes those people things... really aren't willing if because again, if if it's anything that's consuming you, consuming your thoughts, you worry about it. Because mm-hmm. people who are addicted worry a lot about yeah about things it. too. Well, and the anxiety and you have no peace. There's probably something God wants you to give up. That is funny. Well, I was trying to figure out a way to word it. Um, Ephesians four twenty two twenty three. You are taught in regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, to be made new. Um, I'm I'm always asking God what more, and I've said that in other podcasts. And one of the things that He gave me was alcohol. Not that I was an alcoholic, but um, I gave it up. I was I would have two big glasses of wine a night, and um, I didn't realize how that was affecting my mind and my emotions at all. Um, but I've gone months now without having anything, and I went out with friends the other day, and I asked for a virgin margarita, and it wasn't a virgin margarita. <laughs> and I ended up drinking it. And I realized it was like God was showing me this is why, because it totally changes my thought process. Right now we're trying to do so much and I want a clear mind and I want to him to use me. And I realized just by having that small amount of alcohol, because I think my friends finished off, off what I, <laughs> what I had, cause I didn't want to be drinking it. Um, 
just how it affected. And it wasn't huge, but it was like, I got it, God. I see why you even had me give that up. Mm-hmm. And and so that was a surrender. That was, you know, giving it all to God. That was something that I needed to give up, something that I held and had my hands on. You know, I'm not a drunk. I'm not an alcoholic, but I do enjoy my wine. I don't want to give it up. But mm-hmm. I did, and it's not easy. Yeah. So even just stuff like that. Yeah, um, it can be the smallest thing, like someone irritates you, too. Yes. And you go, okay, instead of me obsessing over that this person irritates me or they don't think the way I do or, you know, it could be at work, whatever, just go, Lord, I am willing. If this, you know, nine times out of ten, it's a lesson you're supposed to learn is what I found out. Mm-hmm. So when I'm asking God to, you know, oh, my gosh, this person really bugs me. He's wanting me to become more tolerant. <laughs> <laughs> He's wanting me to become more patient, and that's just how it works. Yeah. Yeah, even down to little things. But sometimes they're really big, painful things. And those, to me, the ones that break your heart mm-hmm. and your spirit, those are the things that are hard, hard, hard or to, anything to give that's up. Causing you, yeah, anything that's causing you to sin at the same time, too. God wants us to be right mm-hmm. with Him, so... What are we holding on to that is keeping us from being closer to the Father? Mm-hmm. Um, and now here's the first Peter that I was going to say a minute ago. First Peter five six through ten. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you be sober minded be watchful your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour resist resist him firm in your faith knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world that's why we are talking about mm-hmm. it it's it's not something unique to us And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's a promise. He puts it right there. (laughs) Yep. We have to believe it. I agree. And if anybody has any questions, you know, Jerry and I are here. We're here to, you know, if you want to reach out to us, you've got us here. You can leave a message on our Facebook, Jesus My King. Um, We are all going through this together. And I'm thankful that I've got brothers and sisters in Christ a phone call away um, that I can talk to about this, but that are there to say, well, Misty, (laughs) you know, and kind of wake me up on some things too. And I've never done that before. I always try to handle everything myself because I'm so godly. (laughs) But no, I mean, you know, that's what I just didn't think people don't understand me. They don't go through the same things I do. They wouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. I can't trust them. So I isolate myself and I can't tell you the huge difference in my walk since I've surrounded myself with um, wonderful Christian people, men and women, that we talk about these things. And that's how this whole thing got started anyway, mm-hmm. was we're like, we, just, we should just talk about it. <laughs> and that's what we're doing. Anyway, we love you. Yeah. Um, so reach out. And, um, yeah, I think we've got some new exciting things coming up that we can't wait to share with you. We've been working on. Um, perfecting and making things better and hopefully that'll be starting next week so um, share 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 and subscribe to our podcast Um, even our youtube page it goes there as well Um, and that is all that is all have a great week